Hey, how you doing? This is Chris, and uh, I'm from www.3dpalace.com. There's a hyphen between 3D and Palace, by the way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some time to kind of show you how we make stuff uh, for Unreal Engine, just using World Machine and some of the tools therein. Now, what we have here is a simple little kind of set of tools that I put together, and they allow me, if I just click on these, Okay, just to um, put together um, some outputs that I can then use to create our um, our terrain, which I can then load into the Unreal Engine. And by doing it the way that I do it, I'm going to get slightly more control without having to manually draw out the terrain. Um, because some of the methods I've seen involve that you kind of build yourself a terrain using this and then you kind of set up multiple maps and literally vertex paint or layer paint onto your model and that's a bit of a pain as far as I'm concerned so I don't want to do it that way anyway this first lesson or lesson one as I like to call it we're going to concentrate on world machine all right now here as you can see I have something already loaded and this is um, a piece of landscape I was working on myself as you can see over here in this corner um, if I just move the sun around a bit you can kind of see some of the detail in this I've got some nice kind of erosion and weathering and all that kind of good stuff but when we start with a new one if I just click new and I'll just delete this you can see that we start with only three of these little fellas here and what we start with are The terrain creation tool, okay, so this is where we generate our terrain from. In this case, advanced Perlin tends to be the model of the thing of choice. Then we have the filter, in this case, the terrace tool. And then we have the output, and this is as simple as it tends to get, okay. So if we go into our advanced Perlin, do a new random seed and just generate something, we can maybe change this to billowy. You see, and we get these kind of green hills, or we can make a terrace like this. There's all sorts of uh, interesting options we can use for this. I always quite like, um, I think it's smooth ridged, if you want mountains. But I think I'll just go for ridged at the minute. There we go. And then we can change a few other little settings that we like in this as well. So we can change the steepness and the elevation center. And just get something we kind of like as a start off. Okay. And then just click okay if we like that. We'll just mash new a few times until we get something else. See? Nice one across the middle there. Right, so click OK. Now, here, this is the terrace. Okay, and what the terrace does is literally what it says on the map. It builds little terraces of erosion because what happens with real rock and real geography is that you have different hardnesses of rock and over time you kind of develop these natural terraces you also get them through things like farming so if I was to click that one which is kind of smooth you can see the terraces there or I can make it simple and then it's like Minecraft okay so it's all down to kind of what you're looking for so I'm going to go for smooth and I'm also going to change my number of terraces perhaps to seven and that should give us some nice contrast there and I can mess around with the layering if I prefer, like so. Maybe just bring that up to about there. And just click OK. OK, so that's our first simple filter that we've added on. And we've not really changed a lot. And now if I go over here to height output, this allows us to write out our actual 3D data to a disk. OK, now we'll mess around with that in a bit. There's no point rushing straight into it. Not when we've got lots of other fun things that we can do. So let's have a look at something um, we can do straight off, and we'll play with the erosion tool. So first, let's just spin this round so that it's a good place. There we go. And I'm going to just grab my erosion tool, which is here. If I click on it, and then I can just drag it down and pop it here. And erosion's a filter, so what I'm going to do is come here expand the size of my filters box, move my terrace over at the left, 
and then with my rows from here and then I'm going to link my primary height to there and then I'm going to put my height field out to there okay and that will override it and now my erosion box if we just see it here the terrace you can see it's a lot sharper and then erosion we're getting these jaggies around the edge here and if you want to see that a bit better if I just come into 3D view you can kind of see it hasn't rendered it yet but if I hit build it'll zoom through it all and then you can see the sharper erosion patterns that are starting to come in there so we're getting kind of a bit glaciation and all that kind of good stuff going on now what I'm going to do next is move back to my view here which is our device view and I can mess around in erosion and make it channeled erosion for example which gives us a slightly sharper and I can add some filters to that if I want to I can also change the rock hardness harder rock obviously is going to give us a sharper edge we can carry sediment further down river so as you see we get that we can increase the strength of our filters and just generally all we're doing is just messing around with it if you don't want to there's also some presets here like full strength or good with terraces so there we go good with terraces is applied and that's given us a nice new piece to kind of uh, bring to our model. And if I just build it again, it'll just run through our entire collection here. And then if I just go into 3D view, there we go there. And you can see our 3D terrain's coming along quite well now. We've got these nice channels and things like that. Okay, so back over to here again, we're at device view. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to nip over to here and I want to grab my layout generator and what my layout generator will do is my layout generator will sit wherever I decide so it could literally sit between advanced pearl and terrace between terrace and erosion or it can sit after erosion and what this does is it gives me the control over my terrain that beforehand I didn't have so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put terrace and erosion together and I'll just stack them up that way if I decide to put more stuff in I can and then I'm just going to feed the output of my advanced Perlin into the layout generator and then my primary output into Terrace. Okay, now you'll notice there's no difference because this isn't doing anything yet. But if I double click on it and just zoom out until I see the highlighted box, this is where our land mass is. Okay, so now if I was to do something like perhaps make a circle, you can see what's happened. We now have this heavily influencing okay now it's only going so far as to influence this piece directly okay it's not gone on to our next pieces in the um, flow chart so we're not seeing any erosion we're not seeing any terracing don't worry about that now the good thing about this is this gives us a kind of a plateau if we needed one maybe we don't want a plateau though so we can do some other things as well so we could use a break up and that'll kind of make it a bit more of a slightly random shape and I can invert the value if I want and that'll sink it right down like that and if I double click on it I can change the properties for it as well so I can make it a bit higher like that I can increase or decrease the fall off value to make it almost like a crater if I want to which might come in useful and I can do things like edit the fall off profile Okay, and I can also change the shape breakup if I want to. So you'll notice that we get over here, it's perfectly circle. And then as we move it along, we can get all sorts of interesting shapes coming from it. We can also rename it if we want to. So we can call this Crater01, like so. And then we can just close it down. Now the good thing about this is we're not limited to kind of one shape either. What I could then do is perhaps draw a line to come in through here like that and then my line here I don't have to use breakup on if I don't want to right, so I can turn breakup off or I can just do as I did before and just kind of double click and edit my line or do anything else I want and I can still move my line about as well so let's uh, move my line down here just move my light and you can see now that we've got this kind of thing going on here where we have a beachy surface coming in 
and our kind of weird creatory part there as well. So now, what I'm going to do is, I know I don't describe these in the best geographical terms, but let's face it, it'll do. Right then, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on my device view again. Okay, and again, that's the initial map. That's after the layout generated dicks with it. That's what it looks like once the terraces hit it. And then we erode it. So if we just hit the build button, okay, build is successful, which means that if I now go over to my 3D view, okay, I can now see some of the nice things that have taken place here. So we now have a waterbed down here, or a riverbed, and this nice canyoning and stuff, which is kind of what I was headed for. Well, it's not kind of, it's exactly what I was headed for, to be fair. Okay, so I'm going to hit F5, which will take us back to this view, or, again, just hit this button here. The hotkeys are next to them. And so far, it will output this, okay, to our height output here. So, if I go to my world commands, project world parameters, I have to define an output. Now, this is quite important, because if I go over here, you can see our various recommended landscape sizes. Okay, and that's recommended landscape sizes if you search on Google under Unreal Engine 4. And there's all sorts of options here. Now, I'm going to go for 505 by 505. Okay, just here. You'll notice that whilst they are square, they're not the normal ones that you think of, i.e., you know, 512 by 512 and stuff. So I click custom. And the resolution's 505. Click OK. And then my height output, if I just double click on this, and I'm going to make it uh, raw 16 or R16. And I'm going to set the path that it's going to use for this. So I have a special folder that I use on this. And I'm just going to make a new folder. Always use underscores, by the way, kids. Very important. Okay, so this is the raw landscape. Okay, and I'm just going to click Save. So, if I click OK now, and just do a quick build again, just to make sure everything's being built the way I want it. Okay. And then if I go to my height output, right output to disk, and it's done. Okay, well, what can we do with that? Let me just open up. Um, Unreal Engine, and at the time of now, I think it's 4.7 pre-release version 3. Okay, so just to show that we're going with a completely new project, uh, let's see, flying, that could be fun, couldn't it? In fact, that could be ideal. Okay, actually, no, sod it, vehicle, yeah, vehicle, I like vehicle. Now that one works on it. I'm just seeming to debate now which one. I'm just going to put first person. Uh, and let's see. Yeah, I'll use this project thingy here. Maximum quality with the starter con uh, stuff and create project. Well, we'll call this tutorial terrain. Sorry, I'm trying to get caught up on exciting things. Okay, tutorial terrain one. Create project. Oh. Okay, this will just take a moment or two. It'll just copy across the stuff and then open the project up for me. Ah, <sighs> dear me. Oh, right, it's about to start. Look, you can tell because it closed the window and then reopened it again, so I'll just pause. Okay, so as you can see, this is our first-person template that we all know and are deeply in love with. Um, now then, I can either make a new map, or I can just delete the hell out of this. I think I'll just delete the hell out of this, to be honest. It only takes a few minutes. And I can just select things like the arena and delete it, the cubes and delete them. Let's see, cube. Tra la 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 to here. Delete. Template label, delete. There's some walls, look, I'll delete them too. All this hard work that someone else has done, man, I've deleted it. Light importance volume. That's gone too. And the player start. There it is. See ya.
Okay, what else is left in this? Well, go with global post process, maybe. Skysphere blueprint. The level blueprint. Get rid of that. I uh, don't think I need much else in this, really. Okay, that should do them. So, with our now almost completely empty map, apart from that reflection sphere, which is pointless at this point, what I'm going to do is go over here to my landscape tool, click. And what this will allow me to do is either build a landscape myself by sculpting it, which will universally look horrible because I'm not a great sculptor, or I can import it in the file, at which point things become a lot better. So if I click on here, and I'm going to go to my game dev folder, and I want to go to my tutorial terrain development, there's my raw landscape, click open, and as you see it's picked up the resolution of 505 by 505, so all the resolution is correct as far as I can see, and now if I just click import, ah, lo ant beholden, it is done. So now if I just increase my camera speed, because this level's pretty darn large, and I think what I'm going to do is just right click here, place actor, and I'm going to put a player start, and then if I just come out of the sculpting tool, and find my player spot start and just click Z on it. Sorry, F, not Z. Just move it until it doesn't say bad size anymore. And I'm just going to move it so that it's looking in a slightly different direction, maybe towards the mountains. Okay, now if I just play it in my viewport, you can see it's, uh, it's a lot of mountains going on there. Okay, I've linked in the player star actually to the map blueprint, so I'll just play from here. It's been a dick. Hang on. I'll delete the player start. That's a bit better. Right, so you can see now, ignore the fact that I'm having problems with my player start again. It's something I've forgotten that I'll probably have to fix in a few. You can see that we have our map looking pretty mighty by any kind of uh, stretch of the imagination. If I was to just uh, throw a bit of C into that, which I could do basically just by putting a water plane into this, you'd see that we have a pretty nice system here already. So what about making this look a bit better just using standard textures and stuff? Well, I'll talk about that in the next one. And for that, if you want to follow along, you're going to need A subscription to GameTextures.com or a similar website that has textures or you can just make them yourself obviously okay so reason being that we're going to use three textures for this okay so thanks for watching so far as we made our basic map and in the next part we'll make it look a bit prettier till then bye bye for now and don't forget to pop by www.3d-palace.com see ya